I just watched the worst superhero show ever. It's such an insult to television that it should be taught in film schools as an example of what not to do when writing a show. I'm of course talking about DC's Naomi. The series premiered on The CW on January 11th, 2022. And the show was such a stain on our history as a species that not only did it get cancelled after one season, but the FBI now uses it to interrogate criminals. Stop it, please, I beg you! Really let that sink in. A network that gave Batwoman three seasons announced this show's cancellation two days after the season finale. And to be honest, I'm surprised it took them that long, as this show has next to no redeeming qualities. For those of you who have been smart enough to avoid this show like a man in a van, Naomi follows the character of Naomi McDuffie, an adopted military kid who is currently staying in a small town named Puerto Suego, and is obsessed with her favorite comic book character, Superman. However, after a potentially real Superman sighting, Naomi starts to feel off and wants to investigate the incident. After finding, then immediately losing, an alien disc that was in the woods, her detective work eventually leads her to the town's tattoo artist named Dee, who reveals to Naomi that not only is he an alien, but so is she. After taking all this in, Naomi starts to train with Dee in hopes to control her powers, especially after we learn that an alien named Brutus, who has taken over Naomi's birth planet, is sending assassins to either capture or kill her. Now our hero has to uncover the mysteries of her past and prepare for an inevitable fight against Brutus. Now, at first, I didn't have a problem with the character of Naomi. I mean, yeah, it was annoying that everyone literally worshipped the ground she walked on as if she was the second coming of Christ, but I have overlooked these kinds of problems in the past. However, as the series progressed, it became painfully obvious that Naomi was the worst written protagonist I have ever seen. There are several aspects that go into creating a compelling protagonist, but the most important one has to be making sure that the character is relatable. Often this is done by giving characters an internal or external struggle, basically challenges for them to overcome. Naomi, however, fails this at world record speeds, as throughout the series, she never has to work hard to overcome an obstacle. This problem is a byproduct of her ridiculous power set. As time goes on, Naomi starts unlocking more abilities, and by the end of the season, she has gained Super Sight, Super Hearing, can shoot energy beams from her hand, Super Strength, X-ray Vision, Thermal Vision, Super Speed, Telekinesis, and Vulnerability, and can f***ing fly! With this kind of power set, how the hell do you lose any fight? Normally, characters that are this powerful will go through some intense training to be able to control their abilities. For example, in the show Superman and Lois, one of their kids named Jordan starts to show signs of having Kryptonian powers, and it took him roughly two seasons before he could really start to get the hang of them. One of the most satisfying powers to see Jordan learn has to be super hearing, as when he first unlocks his power, everything becomes so loud that he has to wear noise cancelling headphones to even focus. Throughout the episode we get to see Jordan practice and slowly build up to gaining control of this ability. So by the end when he uses this to save his dad, it's very satisfying for the audience as they get to see Jordan's progression in real time. Now let's look at Naomi. She also has super hearing, so let's take a look to see what she went through to master it. Very tasty on pancake. That's very nice. I could hear it, Annabelle. Oh, um, she just has it. Um, okay, well, uh, what about Super Sight? I can see that. Super speed, telekinesis. You have a very powerful mind, Naomi. Flying? Oh, piss off. Yeah, I am not screwing with you. All of Naomi's powers just come to her with no drawbacks, and she picks up on using them instantly. The most egregious example of this is in episode 11, Worst Prom Ever. Here, Naomi and her friends are at, well, prom, and an alien has trapped her friends and the rest of the school in two separate force fields on opposite sides of the building. This alien gives her a key to set them free, but by saving one group, the other will die. However, Naomi realizes that if she can touch both fields within one second of each other, she can save both. So she goes to the first shield, destroys it, 
and then... That's super speed thing. Did you know you could do that? No, I had no idea. Yep, at a complete f***ing nowhere, with absolutely no build-up or even sign that Naomi has super speed, she just magically knows how to use this power well enough to save everybody. And this applies to every one of her powers. Yeah, she trains with D to learn control, but more often than not, she will just gain whatever power she needs to save her ass or push the plot forward. For example, look at episode 12, Ready or Not. Naomi is searching for an amulet that could amplify her powers, but is being hunted by one of Brutus' assassins. So that same episode, she gains the power to see visions of the future through telekinesis. And this was just done so Naomi can see the assassin coming from a mile away and not be in any immediate danger. But that wasn't enough for the writers. They woke up that morning and chose evil to make sure that Naomi can't be harmed because having our protagonist struggle is apparently an unheard of concept. Once the assassin catches up to her, this happens. Are you invincible? you what the fuck how on god's green earth do you expect to have any tension when your hero can gain the exact power she needs to overcome a problem at any moment not to mention the fact that she manages to beat people who have years of experience on her without breaking a sweat these aren't obstacles they're inconveniences well characters can struggle through internal problems that can lead to tension yes naomi tries to do that but what makes a character's internal struggle compelling is the consequences that these problems bring. For example, look at Spider-Man's origin story. When Peter first gets his powers, he uses them irresponsibly in a way to make some money. This character flaw directly results in the death of Uncle Ben and leads Peter to overcoming his selfish desires and changing his perspective on responsibility. In Naomi, any flaw they try to give her ends up getting solved within the same episode or even off screen. Naomi just wants to be a normal teenager without powers? Well, that's actually a classic part of the hero's journey. She is refusing the call for action. However, she gets over this by the end of the episode and doesn't face any consequences for initially not accepting her new life. Maybe they could have put one of Naomi's friends in danger because of an alien, and this moment would make Naomi realize that she can't avoid this any longer. What's that? Naomi stops trusting her adoptive parents after finding out they're also aliens? Well, she sulks for an episode before resolving it not even 10 minutes into the next episode. And other than that, all Naomi receives in this show is praise. Everyone loves Naomi. She is so smart. She is so talented. She's one of the most powerful beings in the universe. She pisses gold and farts butterflies. Hell, three of her friends wants to get with her at the same time. Would you be able to relate to this character whose flaws are the equivalent of what you would say at a job interview? Yes, hello, uh, my name is Gio, and my biggest flaw has to be that I'm just too hard of a worker. No, I'm actually just too nice. I am basically Jesus who has come down from the heavens, and you will treat me as such. What? Naomi is the textbook example of a Mary Sue, a character who is seen as too perfect and almost boring for lack of flaws. I never once felt Naomi was in any kind of danger, as she never suffered any consequences for her actions, and has the problem to solve any problem in seconds. So class, when your main character has no flaws and has no obstacles in their way, what happens to the side characters? They become pointless? That is correct, that is correct. Or more specifically, they become pointlessly returning overshadowed people, or props for short. Almost every other character in Naomi is so bland that I can find more depth in a painting. They exist just to praise or help Naomi without any expansion of their own character. For example, let's look at Naomi's trainer D. He is from Thanagar, or the planet that Hawkman and Hawkgirl are from, and we learn that he ended up in Puerto Suego as a way to escape the constant war his people found themselves in. On top of that, he has wings that can sense others with powers, which is how he was able to find out that Naomi was an alien. And that's it. 
Yep, that's all we get for the man who is going to train our hero. Actually, no. The writers tried to give D his own story in episode 6, Homecoming, where we learned that he had a girl named Q who he was madly in love with but hasn't been able to find her since he came to Puerto Suego. He ends up going to an alien bar for information but finds out that she died saving one of the customers who were there at the time. At the end of the episode, D puts away his last memento of his relationship with Q and finally decides it's time to move on. What? Did that seem incredibly rushed with the depth of a puddle? Well, welcome to the CW, where good writing goes to die. That is the only exploration we get of Dee's character throughout the entire show. That's just sad. Instead of making this a side plot, this could have been the main focus of the episode. Have a few flashbacks with D and Q during their time fighting in war. Maybe D used to be a lot more brash and impulsive, but after losing a close friend, Q can show him how to move forward using meditation and focus, which could provide some nice expansion on D's style of teaching and how he trains Naomi. Unfortunately, that means we would have to take screen time away from Naomi, and we can't do that, now can we? But apparently, what we can do is make sure that all five of Naomi's friends get some kind of focus. For context, at the start of the series, we are introduced to five of Naomi's friends, Annabelle, Nathan, Jacob, Lourdes, and Anthony. They are all given important roles at some point throughout the season, and frankly, they are some of the blandest characters I have ever seen. Their personalities, if that's really what we want to call it, are just whatever archetype they fit. Annabelle is the best friend, Nathan is a jock slash love interest, Jacob is the nerdy tech guy, Lourdes is a rebel loner, and Anthony is the f***ing simp. Simp! Simp! And that's as deep as these guys go. There, there's no exploration of any of their characters. They're just there to give Naomi someone to talk to and to hog screen time that could be used on better characters. Why the hell do you think shows like Arrow and The Flash had their teams consist of three to four people at the start. That amount is a lot easier to manage and develop, rather than a group of six to seven characters in 13 episodes. Are you f***ing high? You know what? There's actually an easy solution here. Combine some of the characters. Mix together Lourdes and Jacob, so we have a tech guy who can be a bit of a loner, give Nathan less screen time, and have him join the group after he finds out Naomi's an alien, and just completely cut out Anthony from the show because he somehow is more useless than taking a second language in high school. The only character in the show that actually gets some development is a man named Zumbato, who is a used car salesman who also turns out to be an alien. The show starts off with everyone believing he's an antagonist, as he was not only cryptic and is seen as a scammer within the community, but he also stole Naomi's disc in episode 1. However, this is eventually flipped on its head. For context, in episode 6, Naomi finds what she believes to be the ship she came to Earth in. So, she brings it to a scientist named Dr. Bell, in hopes that her research of the extraterrestrial may allow her to find her birth planet. However, Dr. Bell quickly catches on that Naomi is an alien, and tricks her into being captured and getting her energy suckled to power her machine. This is when Zimbardo flies in to save Naomi, and during their escape, he tells her about her home planet, or universe actually, Earth-29, and his past. Now, I know this is about to sound bizarre, but Zimbato actually gets character development with the story. I, I know, it's very shocking, but just stay with me here. Anyway, we learned that on Earth-29, there was a natural disaster called the Tear, which gave a handful of people like Zimbato powers, but also slowly was destroying their world. He later met a woman named Akira, who believes that they were chosen to help people, but because of these abilities. So, Zimbato, Akira, and Naomi's birth parents became a part of a group called the 29, who used their powers to help the people of their Earth. However, this all went south when Brutus appeared on Earth 29 planning to rule, and someone sold out the 29 to him, causing the members to flee. Zimbato ends up going to Naomi's Earth as a last promise to her parents to make sure that she is safe. However, after he found out she was with a loving family, he decides to watch out for her from a distance until she was ready. 
This recontextualizes a lot of Zimbardo's actions in a way that makes sense given this new information. He didn't believe Naomi was ready yet, which is why he took the disc from her. He didn't tell her his past because he wanted to make sure she was enough of a free thinker to make her own decisions. And when he believes she may be ready to use the information on the disc, he gives it back to her with no strings attached. Holy shit! We did it, ladies and gentlemen! We found an actual character! Sound the alarms, boys! We found one! And it gets better! We actually get consequences for Naomi's actions from this. She realizes that she had been judging Zimbardo based on no hard evidence and just from word of mouth. This caused her to not trust him when he warned her about Star Labs and what got them in this situation in the first place. Oh my god, I'm stunned. The writers actually expanded on the characters. You know, let's give them a round of applause, everyone. Round of applause for doing the bare fucking minimum. As much as I do enjoy Zimbardo, one competently written character isn't enough to turn the side characters from one-dimensional tropes into actual people with their own lives that don't revolve around this bitch. But even if all the characters were written with the bare minimum of competence, the show would still be a steaming pile of orangutan feces. But it also wouldn't change the fact that the plot has no direction. I have watched this show twice now, taking 15 pages of notes, and I still have no clue how I can sum up this plot in any way that will be considered coherent. So instead, we're going to look at the four main elements of this plot and show why they are more broken than my soul after watching this cum dumpster of a series. Those elements being Naomi's investigation into her past, the disc, the villain, and the ending. Let's start with Naomi's investigation. Initially, this was the driving point of the show. After Naomi found out she was an alien, her goal was to learn as much about what happened to her and her birth parents as possible. And while this does push the plot forward, it's more of an artificial push. What I mean by this is that most of the conclusions Naomi comes to during this investigation was only possible due to outside factors out of her control, or are such a stretch, you would think that she's Mr. Fantastic. For example, in episode 3, 0 to 60, while she is grounded, Naomi is trying to figure out where to find something called a translation key, which is basically a Rosetta Stone to help read the alien writing on the disc from episode 1. She pretty much hits a dead end until Lourdes sneaks into her house to bring her some comics. More specifically, a Zatanna comic. Why is this important? Well, in the comic, Zatanna hides her own magical artifact in fire, which somehow gives Naomi the idea that a fire that happened in her town under a bomb shelter in 1921, way before any signs of aliens in Puerto Rico, is somehow connected to the disc and the translation key. Calling this reaching will be a bigger understatement than saying Pompeii got a little hot in 79 AD. There is actually no way this should work out, considering how loose this connection is. Like, what are the odds that Lourdes would bring Naomi not just a Zatanna comic, but one that gives her the inspiration to look at five- I see something. I think it's the translation key. It's- What? What the f- Oh, you gotta be fiddling my ass right now. Really? That worked? That is how you found the translation key that is essential to moving the plot forward? I have seen Tom and Jerry traps that make more sense than this backwards ass reasoning. But wait, it gets worse because the next big thing that Naomi finds in her investigation is her spaceship. But when she got to the place she wanted to investigate, there are no signs of anything out of the ordinary. So Naomi's up sh creek without a paddle, right? Yes, I knew it. I knew you would have x-ray vision. Oh wait, I forgot, just in the nick of time, Naomi gains the ability to see through walls, to find the secret room that had her spaceship. That means that if her powers never emerged at that exact time, then she would have never found the spaceship, never gone to Star Labs to get captured, or learned the truth about Zimbardo, completely shattering the plot. But wait, there's more! That's right, there is more, because it is about time we move on to the disc which I'm pretty sure is a part of a massive plot hole. For context, 
In episode 12, Naomi and Annabelle go on a trip to try and find a power source rumored to be on Earth. This source would supercharge Naomi's powers right before Brutus' attacks. So, after a long road trip and a fight with an assassin where he says a very specific line, Naomi gets an idea. Interesting how life comes full circle. In the end, you always wind up back at the beginning. You always go back to the beginning. This was the beginning. This action creates a door that allows Naomi to talk to the essence of her parents, who informs her that they were betrayed and to not trust anyone. This plays a big part in the next episode, as this warning is what motivates Naomi and her parents to try and leave Puerto Suego, which is the reason Naomi's adoptive parents were able to be captured by Brutus' men without Naomi being able to do anything to help them. Now, the problem with this scene isn't the fact that if the assassin didn't say that very specific line, Naomi would still be lost on what to do, not the fact that the essence of her parents was created before their deaths as shown in this line. What happened to you? We don't know. So, I don't know how they knew they were betrayed? No. The massive plot hole can be exposed with this question. Where did the disc come from? Think about it. In episode 8, Fellowship of the Disc, is revealed that someone took the disc and episode 9 is all about trying to find out who was the thief. But, they never found out. So, where did the disc come from? No, this is a genuine question I'm asking you guys, the audience. Where did it come from? Who took it initially? I don't know, the show never tells us. And as far as I know, we never see Naomi find it. Like, have I finally lost my mind? I have watched this season twice, skimmed through several episodes a third time, looked at countless web pages, and found nothing about how the f Naomi has the disc here. If any of you figure it out, please tell me, because as of now, this is one of the biggest plot holes I have ever seen. Actually, no. It's not a hole. It's a goddamn crater. No, screw it. We are in Clown World at this point, so all aboard the short bus, because it's time we talk about how stupid the villains are in the show. First off, we don't even meet our main antagonist, Brutus, until the last episode, so all we know is how dangerous people say he is. Instead, we end up seeing assassins that Brutus sends to either kill or capture Naomi. And the only thing that ends up saving her from getting killed is the plot armor the writers give her. For example, in episode 4, one of the assassins going after Naomi has the powers to teleport. And at that point, Naomi doesn't have super speed. So that's pretty much GG. Even with D interfering, all this guy has to do is teleport to Naomi and then teleport away. Um, teleport. Teleport. Teleport! Dear God, man, just teleport already! Oh, piss off! Right on. The second assassin wasn't even a real challenge. Naomi practically wiped the floor with her, even though Naomi's only been training for what, like two months? And the last one we see in episode 12 has the powers to kill someone with just a look. Now, what does he do when he finally gets to Naomi? He engages in close quarter combat rather than using his fucking meta powers. This man was specifically sent to kill her. So why didn't he use his most powerful weapon? I mean, it's not like his powers doesn't affect aliens, if that was the case, he would be the worst assassin in the universe, and it would make no sense on why he was sent in the first place. Strike three and you're out. God help me. Well, his fighters suck, but Brutus himself must be incredibly powerful, right? I mean, when he finally fights Naomi, he gets one hit on her before she overpowers him, winning the fight in four minutes. What? This is your big bad for the season? The huge threat everyone has been hyping up? This pussy? What makes it worse is that the show seems to be setting him up to be a recurring villain. So, um, one, why would you let him get his ass kicked by Naomi when they first meet? And two, why not show how strong and ruthless he is supposed to be? Let me see him kill a subordinate because they failed the mission. Torture someone. I don't care. Just make him an actual threat. And the ending. 
dear Christ on Mother Mary and Joseph, this damn ending. But before we get into that, let me just go over some important context. So when I inevitably pop a blood vessel, you will all understand. At the end of episode 9, Naomi finds out that her adoptive parents are actually aliens from the same planet as her birth parents. Later, when explaining their history, Naomi's parents inform her about the fate of her birth parents, saying simply that Brutus got to them. We don't get any more expansion on this until episode 12, where after Naomi takes another spin on the overpowered ability wheel, we learn that her telekinesis allows her to see visions of the past and future. In her first flashback, she sees two figures who she believes were her adoptive parents, saving her as an infant. Now let's fast forward to the last scene in the last episode. After Naomi beats Brutus more easily than a one-legged child, I, I mean after her climactic fight with Brutus, Naomi and her parents go out into the woods to hide and bury her spaceship. However, Naomi gets another flashback and it's revealed that her adoptive parents actually killed her birth parents so they could take Naomi and potentially use her powers to fix the tear. You shot them, you left them for dead. It was for the greater good, Naomi. We always believed your power was the key to fixing the tear. They said we were crazy. We tried to make your parents see. This new backstory for Naomi's parents actually breaks the show from its foundation. Everything we thought we knew about Naomi's parents is not just a lie, but a lie that when put into context with their actions, makes as much sense as it would to hire a homeless man to file your taxes. Their theory is that Naomi's powers could fix the tear, right? So then, why didn't you ever plan on telling Naomi about her powers? Eventually, she would need to know about them so you could attempt to fix the tear, even if you wanted to give her a normal childhood wouldn't it be more beneficial for both of you if she knew from a child what she was? That way, you could have her believe in your theory as she gets older. What if her powers never developed? Wouldn't you want to double check your theory and run some tests considering how adamant you were and apparently still are that this plan will work? They said we were crazy. We tried to make them see. We tried to make your parents see. But no one would listen. Hold up! Run that back real quick. They said we were crazy. We tried to make them see. We tried to make your parents see. So, on Earth-29, many people thought you were crazy and didn't listen to you two, including Naomi's parents. Your Honor, I'd like to call two clips to the stand. I made your parents a promise. That if anything ever happened to them, I would find you. I would keep you safe. Your mother was my friend. So both Akira and Zabato were both good friends with Naomi's birth parents? And you're telling me they didn't know about the two nutcases that thought to use their newborn daughter to fix the tear? I find that very hard to believe. And this fundamentally changes the entire show for the worst. And I didn't even think that was possible. Now what was a simple adoptive parent situation doesn't make sense with this new context, and it also did damage to two characters as a result, one of which being the only one that is competently written in the whole damn show. Even when this series tries to take one step forward, it somehow manages to break its leg and tumble 15 steps back. <sighs> there is no doubt in my mind that Naomi is the worst superhero show that has ever been released. And the best explanation I can give as to why is because of incompetence from the top down as the production of the show is kind of a mystery. I mean, look at the Wikipedia page for this series. It's more barren than a Twitch streamer's dick. Compare this to the page for Stargirl Season 1. The difference is night and day. This is probably because, just like the writers, the audience couldn't give two shits nor a fuck about this show, considering after episode 4, the show wasn't able to crack even 500,000 live viewers. The first teaser for the show on YouTube had only 60,000 views and a 50% like to dislike ratio. Seriously, I need to know, who acts for this show? The character of Naomi from the comics was first introduced in March of 2019, 
and the show started development during December of 2020. Not even two years. You're telling me I can't have a John Diggle Green Lantern show, but someone greenlit this? Are you on drugs? With pointless characters, a dysfunctional plot, and a protagonist that holds the title as the biggest Mary Sue in media, this show is destined to be forgotten just as fast as it was cancelled. Anyway, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comment section down below. What do you guys think of this dumpster fire? Did you like Naomi? Did you hate it? Are you glad it's cancelled? I know I'm glad it's cancelled. Just let me know all down there in the comments. My next video is going to be a flash video, but a different kind of format, a different style, but I do hope you guys will enjoy it when it comes out and are looking forward to that. Well, anyway, sorry for the quick outro. I gotta actually go to work in about, well, now. So, anyway, once again, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys liked it and you're new to the channel, hit that like and that subscribe button. Also, ding the channel's potential, hit the same buttons. Anyway, my name is Vigio, and we'll talk to you all later. Peace!